book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Two of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. It's kind of my ministry verses. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Um, I know a lot of soldiers. I've known a lot of soldiers, been in ministry with soldiers down through the years. Uh, Marine Corps, Army, Navy. I don't think I've ever met anybody from the Air Force that I knew as a friend. I've met men that were, you know, Air Force veteran, but uh, never you know, knew them personally. But um, the one thing I've learned about soldiers, and of course I'm married to a military veteran. My wife was in two branches of the military, Army and Navy, if you didn't know that. And uh, so I've been around a lot of military people, and I've learned one thing, and that is that uh, soldiers have to fight. Soldiers are supposed to fight. Soldiers are supposed to uh, cause damage to the enemy. And if a soldier's not causing damage to the, to the enemy, then they're causing damage to themselves, to their own military. Uh, you have to fight just that way. And uh, spiritual warfare is something that is very deadly. It's a lot more difficult than any kind of a military battlefield. Now the military battlefield might be a lot more horrifying going through the things of being shot at and wounded and seeing friends die. I, I will definitely, you know, say that. But the spiritual warfare issue is more challenging in many ways because it doesn't stop. There's no R&R &R from it. You don't get away from it. And uh, the, mil the uh, spiritual warfare, um, the spirit realm will come after your family. They'll hit soft targets, in other words. And um, they'll go after your mind. They'll go after you when you sleep. It's a terrible thing. But what do you do? Well, you just kind of go along to get along that way. They'll just leave you alone. No, you don't do that. What you do is you fight. That's all you can do when you get into a, a battle situation. It's either I'm going to kill or I'm going to be killed. And as a good soldier, you're supposed to endure hardness. And um, you have to understand military tactics if you expect to be in any kind of shape as a Christian. You have to understand how the devil will go after you, how he'll mess with you, and how you can mess back, mess with him back, I should say. Uh, don't make a mess back. But uh, <clears throat> um, right now, uh, there's a lot of tactics of warfare that are happening here in America. A lot of subversive things, communism and, and things like that as they, these people are attacking this nation. They are attacking um, a lot of the morals and the traditions and the standards that we've had of the laws of this land. They're attacking that stuff. And uh, you have to fight. And here recently they had this the Stuper Bowl, and uh, which is a military tactic to get to pe people away from what really matters. They argue over which grown man has the ball and his little tights running around. A stupid waste of time. Whatever, if you like football, whatever. I've offended you, good, you know, whatever. You know, take your thumb out of your mouth to type your comment, I don't care. But uh, it's, a, it's a dumb pastime. Uh, if a bunch of men want to play it themselves, well fine, that's okay. You're in, going to be in good shape. But the vast majority of people that watch football are not in good shape. Uh, they're couch potatoes. But uh, this Stuper Bowl came out, and they had the Black National Anthem. And um, I actually heard a guy talking about it, and uh, some college professor or something, and he said it's funny because he said a lot of the blacks in America are actually practicing now a form of neo-segregation. <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful world of constantly changing uh, descriptions of things, you know, because of the way the world is constantly changing. And he talked about that a lot of the blacks out there are now segregating themselves, saying we'll have uh, all black competitions, we'll have all black schools, we'll have all black magazines, we'll have all black radio stations, we'll have all black uh, holidays, and that's segregation. Kind of an interesting thing. So you're actually to get out of the thing of racism, we're going to end racism by using segregation. 
That's kind of what I've preached over the years, you know. Segregation eliminates racism. People don't get that stuff. Um, it's not, segregation is not a hate-filled type of thing. It's not racist. Racism is, my race is better than yours and yours should be eliminated. Uh, I'm against that. I've always been against that. But to say the races are different and we should stay separate as to maintain our unique characteristics that God gave us, there's nothing wrong with that. But I need to say something here in terms of warfare, in terms of what we should be doing as Christians, something that's very important. Um, there's an airplane way up there. probably can't see it. You can hear it probably. I don't know if you can see that or not. Under the tree there. But um, what we should be doing, what you should be doing as a Christian, you need to war that warfare and say, okay, what is this leading towards? Now, if you're a black brother or sister in the Lord, you need to understand what this black racism stuff is, the black national anthem, a lot of the Black Lives Matter and all these other things like that. It's designed to divide the people, to make hatred between whites and blacks. A lot of people don't see the bigger picture and they want to get involved in violence. They want to fight each other and kill each other and whatever else. And you have to see that as it is. It's a threat to your freedom and your safety. I'll give you an example of this. Um, many years ago, um, I saw the whole thing of Steven Anderson. Uh, I was saved at the time. I was just starting to get into ministry and I saw this thing of the Border Patrol beating him up and all this other stuff, you know, Border Patrol attacks about this pasture, all this, you know, stuff. It was on InfoWars. I was a big InfoWars fan at the time. Not anymore. Um, and I fell for it. I thought, oh, wow, this is really something. And man, I can't believe that they'd actually beat up a Baptist pastor. And so I started to follow Steven Anderson a little bit, just watching his stuff. I wasn't, you know, following as in, you know, thinking the guy was good, but um, just I'll listen to some of his stuff and I started to see the post-trib stuff and some of the other things. I thought, uh-oh, uh, he's a fraud. And I just kind of thought, eh, you know, he won't go anywhere. He's just another rabid nut. Then I started to see mainstream media promoting the guy and I started to see some other things. He's getting pretty big and I thought, I wonder if he's being raised up as sort of a disinformation, as whatever you'd want to call it. Um, I know there's different names for it, but they would, they basically raise up somebody that's fake to discredit a movement. They'll bring them in and they'll say, okay, infiltrate this movement and we want you to help bring it down by being fake, by making violent situations and whatever else. And as I tracked the new IFB, um, I started to see more of this type of leaning and I thought, uh, huh, okay, I think I see what they're doing with this. And that's why I fought them so rapidly and I fought against Anderson. Steven Anderson and exposed a lot of his stuff and I asked him questions and he'd respond back and whatever else. Um, the one thing I went after was I asked him if he believed in the Holocaust. Was it real or fake? And he said, at the time he said real, then later he only came out and said fake because I knew what his system was a part of. And again, I went after Jack Hiles because that's where Anderson came out of that whole cult. Um, I, in other words, I saw a threat out ahead. I see where they're going with this and I have to do something to fight it from my angle so I don't get pulled in with this thing. So it's not, um, there was an article, they came out and they said, Stephen Anderson is the head of the King James Only Movement. Secular article, I thought, ah, I see where you're going. I still probably have the video up on my channel saying Stephen Anderson is not the head of the King James Only Movement. Um, but see, what I'm saying is, I saw a threat, I saw where it was going, and I thought, they're trying to, to pull all King James only people into this thing of this radical, we hate sodomites, sodomites should be put to death, the whole deal, and you know, we blow up uh, uh, gay bars or whatever. I knew where they were going with it, and I said, no, that's not going to work. Not on my watch, I'm gonna fight this. And if you're a black brother or sister out there, you better look and see where this whole, um, black racist movement is going. You better look and see, okay, this is going to lead to violence. That violence could come back to me and my family. I don't want that. I better fight against this. All Christians have to look and see, okay, and pray about things and say, Lord, what fight am I supposed to be involved in? I don't want to waste my time. 
what, where can I be fighting? What should I do? And then fight in that area. You know, if I come out and I attack this black racist movement, then they just say, oh, you're German, you're Nazi, you're, you're a white supremacist, white nationalist, you're, you're racist, and all the other stuff. I'm, I'm not going to be able to fight it on the level that a black brother or sister could fight it. And I saw that there were some black people here in America that did stand up and did speak against this black national anthem saying, there's nothing wrong with our national anthem. We have one national anthem. That's the way it is. There isn't anything wrong with it. And I find it disgusting that they would do this. It's a racist thing and this woke, all this woke stuff is satanic. That's good, okay? Because then you have a lot of white people and they're saying, they're getting mad at this black racist stuff, but then you say, are all blacks bad? And they'll say, no, they're not all bad. That's the important thing here, okay? Um, we have to all look and say, what things can we do? What should I be doing? What, what fight should, be, should I be involved in? That's very important. Pick up the shovel here. Fell over in the wind. But we all have to think about that. What are, what are the fights that we should be involved in? The spiritual warfare. We're supposed to fight right up until the time the Lord says, come up hither. And you have to think about it from the, the, the standpoint of I'm a soldier for Jesus Christ. Um, I'm at war. This is not a time for peace and safety and, and hey, nice times and let's just get along and whatever. And that's one of the biggest problems with the church buildings things too, by the way, because you go there and it's a social club. It's not a, a warfare, you know, an armed military camp with soldiers training for battle. Are you kidding me? Of course not. Brethren, we have to fight. Um, they're trying to come out and they're trying to make us eat bugs. Um, saying that it's not sustainable to eat meat or something like this. Well, we know the Bible talks about that in the end times, commanding to abstain from meat. It's a doctrine of devils. Um, don't go along with it. They're trying to come out and say that uh, we're going to put you on a list if you buy a Bible and a gun. You know, that somehow makes you a terrorist threat and you could be a, a shooter or something, a mass shooter or something if you buy a Bible. <laughs> Tried to ban the King James Bible there in Utah a little while ago. Uh, didn't work, thankfully. But you see what I'm saying? There's warfare. There's fighting. Find what you can do. Ask the Lord, what can I do? What is my duty, sir? You know, that's what we all have to do. So, um, hopefully you can hear me. I can feel the wind blowing against the thing here. Hopefully it's not affecting this sound too bad. Um, maybe try to shield it. Uh, but um, I have a big study that I'm working on currently. The Lord's really revealed something, and I, there's a lot of research that's going into it, so um, I don't have it done yet. I've you know, been busy with a bunch of other things, but I'm going to be trying to get to it today, some of the study notes and things. So I just wanted to do two quick walk and talk videos here, and uh, just to encourage you. Um, but the study that's coming out is going to be a, a real big one. Something I've had questions about for years, and the Lord's really opened up my mind to this whole thing. And some scriptures are coming to mind, and other arguments and things, and it's really making sense to me. So, but uh, our command, commanding officer, the captain of our salvation, says that we're supposed to fight. Don't forget that. Um, your rewards in heaven will be based on your service to Jesus Christ here. Your suffering. What have you done for the Lord? So that is going to be it. I'm going to quit this video now. I'm actually using my regular video camera. My little camera is having all kinds of trouble. Probably going to have to do something about that. It's not working so good for walk and talks anymore because the lens gets so dusty because it doesn't close correctly. Uh, so technical details. But um, Oh, well, at least I get a good uh, arm workout lifting this thing <laughs> with one hand as I'm walking along. But uh, I'm going to head to the office now and get these videos edited and rendered and uploaded for you out there. Please do keep us in your prayers. Thank you to everybody out there that supports the ministry, as always. I like to say that. And we will see you in upcoming videos.